children welcome to our class hope you have all gone through the lesson the journey and written the additional glossary meanings along with your textual glossary today we are going to continue the rest of the textual grammar of this lesson now first question and answers so these question and answers are given to you in your material go through 1 to 8 questions Next, going with the second Roman, write the number of the paragraph that gives the stated information in each of the following sentences. Here, four sentences are given. You should write from which paragraph this sentence was taken. Now, first sentence: the author enjoyed his married life. So, this was taken from the paragraph one, the first paragraph. Second, the author tried to convince himself that he had not done anything wrong. You should observe from which paragraph it was taken. Now, this paragraph number eleven. This was taken from paragraph eleven. The author was ashamed of making his father carry his trunk. Tenth paragraph. The author looks at himself and his father as two travelers taking two different roads. the last paragraph that is paragraph 16 now the roman the following statements are false correct them so you can write directly in the textbook itself the author offered to carry the trunk for some time it is so clear that the statement is false now what is the correct line the author didn't carry the trunk at all throughout the story his father carried it all the way so i'm repeating again the author didn't carry the trunk at all throughout the story his father carried it all the way now second one the author could decide on whether to allow his father to carry the trunk or not The author decided that it would be better to let his father carry the trunk. It is not whether to allow his father. So I answer for that. The author decided that it would be better to let his father carry the trunk. Now third, the author took unpaid leave. The author initially thought of taking unpaid leave but later he decided against it repeating the author initially thought of taking unpaid leave but later he decided against it fourth one the father was not happy with the old shoes his son gave him it is wrong sentence now what is the correct one we'll write the father was happy with the old shoes his son gave him so these are the answers for the third roman now vocabulary vocabulary part of every lesson is very 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 important for you during the examination time you have to cover the vocabulary part perfectly without leaving any roman now look first roman look at these words from the story newly wed wife newly after hyphen given followed with wed wife second bus stop third forehead if you observe these three words you will find a difference what is that in the first there is a hyphen after newly second after bus there is a small gap and written stop third four head there is no gap between four and head now we are going to study about what is the difference in these three words they are called compound words what is called as a compound word a compound word is a union of two or more words to convey a unit idea or special meaning that is not as clearly or quickly conveyed by separated words hope you have all understood a compound word is a union so combination of two or more words sometimes you may take two sometimes you may take three in the first example you have seen newly wed wife here we have taken three words whereas in the second and third two words bus stop forehead 
to convey a unit idea or you are going to get special meaning when you join the two words now compound words may be hyphenated written open as separate words or written solid solid means closed in the third forehead how it is written it is very closed the two words were joined so that is called as solid means it is closed whereas bus stop it is written separately it is called as open compound and first one there is a hyphen after newly so it is called as hyphenated now i hope you have understood now how many types it is three what is it hyphenated open closed the use of compounding in english is an evolving process as expressions become more popular or adopt special meaning they follow a gradual evolution from two or more separate or hyphenated words to single words now here is an example given to you same words written in the three models first one audio vis audio visual now look at it audio visual is written in three models first audio visual open hyphenated closed now second copy editor first one open second hyphenated third closed wildlife wildlife is an open second hyphenated and third closed the words in the first second and third columns are called open compounds hyphenated compounds and closed compounds respectively in this unit we focus on hyphenated compounds a hyphenated compound is a combination of words joined by a hyphen or hyphen here the hyphen aids understanding and readability and ensure correct pronunciation words are hyphenated mainly to express the idea of a unit and to avoid ambiguity so here mostly we are concentrating on the hyphenated words in this lesson now you have to understand the three models what are the three models open compound hyphenated compound closed compound sometimes he will give you in the classification put under correct headings he will give you few words and he will ask you to write either open compound closed compound or closed hyphenated or open hyphenated choice of the setter paper setter now pick out all the compound words from the story and group them under the headings as explained above now he is asking you pick out all the compound words from the story how many compound words are there you can pick out from the story and group them under the headings so already we have seen no open compound hyphenated compound closed compound you have to group them how many closed compound words are there how many hyphenated compounds how many open compounds you can make it in your notes itself now i am showing you the words which are from the textbook now look at these words now next from us fill in the blanks to make hyphenated compound words refer to a dictionary and get the meaning write a few sentences using them appropriately see this picture 1 2 3 4 20 kilo chest now he given you a blank after 20 rupee now 20 a blank next given tin now first one i will tell you second third fourth you can do in your own now 20 kilo chest 20 rupee what do we write here note n o t e note now tin is given so usually tin means it is in the form of oil something 20 liters oil tin now i will tell you the own sentences for these answers he can easily lift a 20 kilo chest my father gave me a 20 rupee note we ordered a 20 liter oil tin and it has just been delivered in the same manner second third fourth you do it in the textbook 
and write the own sentences for these in the notebook. So now two tasks what we have to do in the notes is A Roman, pick out all the compound words from the story and group them under the headings and B Roman only one sentences because you will write the answers in the textbook itself for those. Now turn your page. Fill in the blanks with the missing parts of compound words. Here the blanks are given. Some of the missing compound words has to be added. Now let us look at the first. Kedarnath lived in Uttarakhand. Due to heavy rains, his village was hit by floods. Now we are talking about due to the heavy rains, his village was hit by floods. His newly dash house fell down. Newly is a word given house. Now newly what do we write in the first word? First blank. Newly built. Newly constructed. It is your choice. So you can write built or constructed. And he became dash less. Now as his house was fell down. Now what happened? He became homeless. So we will add home. Third, the chief minister visited all the dash hit villages. In this we are talking about hit by floods. Now the third answer, the chief minister visited all the flood hit villages. So the answer for the third flood and announced immediate help. However, Kedarnath lost his Self dash and try to commit suicide by jumping into the flooded river. So committing suicide means that he became in a negative mood. So we will write lost his self confidence. Some brave and dash hearted people. Which hearted people you will be this? Brave and kind hearted people. Kind is the word. Rescued him risking their life. They told their stories to someone had lost his dash wedded wife newly and someone else had lost all his family members. One of them offered him a dash collar job. Which collar job will be given to him? Actually white collar job is talking about the government job. Now here it is only a private job so we can call a blue collar job, it required him to carry rice bag, but he could not carry even a 20 dash bag, 20 kilo bag. So he asked for a dash job, he asked for a white collar job, but no such jobs were available. One of them suggested dash employment scheme, self employment scheme. But Kedarnath had no money. One day as he was walking on the pebble strewn road, he found some dash plated idols and jewelry in a box. So jewelry, usually we will talk about gold. So some gold plated idols and jewelry in a box. Here are the answers. So first one built, second one home, third flood, four confidence, fifth kind. 6th newly, 7th blue, 8th kilo, 9th white collar, 10th self, 11th strewn, 12th gold. So this is about our compound words. Make it very clear. How many kinds of compound words are there? Closed compound, open compound, hyphenated compound. So here I am showing you. So modifier, head and compound. So noun to noun. Here is the example I am showing you. Go through all these. So noun and noun, bookcase. Adjective, noun, blackboard. Verb, noun, breakwater. Preposition, noun, underwater. Noun, adjective, milk white. Adjective, adjective, pink white. Verb, adjective, tumble down. Noun preposition love in preposition preposition without clear just uh, example by word class this is now going with the next 
reduplicative words this is the end of topic for us what are called reduplicative words how many types of reduplicative words were there reduplicative words are used in a variety of ways some simply imitate sounds okay that is the meaning of the reduplicative here look at the word dilly dally from the text this is a reduplicative word the words super duper and bye bye are also reduplicative words but they belong to different category shown below see from the textbook we have seen dilly dally super duper bye bye these are all coming under the reduplicatives but now these reduplicatives are again classified into three duplicative type alliterative type rhyming these are the three which we use in the reduplicatives now what is the difference between duplicative alliterative and rhyming duplicative please listen carefully this is very very important here the first part of the word is repeated without any change the first part of the word is repeated without any change means how here example is given bye bye ta ta pa pa ha ha so these words what happened the first word is repeated again such words are called as duplicative now what did we understand about duplicative the first part of the word is repeated without any change such words come under duplicative now alliterative here the two parts have the same consonant but different vowels two parts have the same con consonant means the first word see here example dilly dally in this dilly dally d is a consonant used in the first part and second part also but second word in the first part i is given whereas in the second part a the rest of the words are common same dilly dally first part d second part d first word is same where are the second vowels are changed now second example chit chat here what did you observe c h the first part second part are same but the third is changed now what do we understand we can change the second or even the third but they should be vowels the first and second or the only the first is a consonant but the third if you are going to change it should be vowel or if you want to change second it should be a vowel now here example given to you about the change of the second and change of the third place dilly dally chit chat now other examples if you take ding dong d is common okay ping pong jig jag these words come under as alliterative now what did we do here we did not change the consonant the first part second is changed third rhyming you all know what is a rhyming the second word starts with a different consonant but rhymes with the first part now till now what we have seen the first part second part are same it comes under duplicative whereas it is the first part is a consonant second it is a vowel it comes under alliterative now total change in the second and uh, with a different consonant but rhymes with the first part example super duper tini wini early burly these words come under as a rhyming hope you have all understood 
Now look at the following reduplicatives carefully and put them under proper headings in the table given below. Now he had given you all the three types of the words. Now in the next page, duplicative, alliterative, rhyming table is given. Now you start arranging them in the following table. This is the task for you to complete. So when you start doing, you will understand how to do and you will come across some doubts so that it will be easy for you to get the answers. Now next. Reduplicatives are used in a variety of ways. Some simply imitate sounds. Ding dong, bow wow, some suggest alternative moments, movements, flip flop, ping pong and some intensify meaning teeny weeny. When do we use this? When we talk about very small. Tip top, very good. Find the meanings of the words you like and use them in your own sentences. You will find similar words in your language too. For example, in Telugu, we have words like chichi, popo, kadu kadu, tartama, tado pedo, pilla jella, ato ito. Give some examples from your language. Don't they sound musical? So these words usually we use in Telugu language and don't they sound very musical? See, ding dong. What do you mean by ding dong? It is the noise made by a bell. Ping pong, table tennis. Tata, we usually say tata. When do we say tata? Goodbye. So you try few of them and you can write it in the textbook itself. Answer each of the following questions using a reduplicative word. So which words were required? Only reduplicative words. Now what does the clock say? What does the clock say? Tick tock. T-I-C-K, T-O-C-K, tick tock. Put a hyphen after tick then you write talk. What does the school bell say? Ding dong. How does the rain drop? Pitter patter. What does the dog say? Bobo. How do you laugh? Ha ha. So these are the answers for these questions. By this, the second vocabulary part about the reduplicative words completed. These two topics are very important. First one about the compound words. Second about the reduplicative. Now we are going with the grammar part. In this, we will be observing the relation between the simple past and the past perfect. Very, very important topic. Let fill in the blanks, it will be given to you. Let us see here. In this story, the author used the past perfect tense structure had plus past participle had plus v3 in many sentences. If you observe the following sentences from the story and the rules given under them, you will understand why and how the past perfect tense is used. Now we are going to learn today about the four rules what are given about the past perfect tense. Now first one, it was 1020, my father had already left. So this was taken from para 6. In the lesson we have gone through that. See this is our paragraph. A large crowd gathered at our place the day I was to leave. People had come to wish me luck. It was 10.20 when I left for Dirang. My father had already left. Now this is the sentence taken. It was 10.20 when I left for Dirang. When an action takes place before a point of time in the past, the action is expressed the past perfect tense. Sometimes the point of time can be understood from the earlier sentence and other contextual clues. Now when you look at a sentence, see if they have two actions in a sentence. If the action is expressed, the action takes place before a point of time in the past one action already completed after that action the other action has taken place so the earlier action is expressed in the past perfect tense 
that is the rule number 1 so it was given it was 1020 when i left for dirang my father had already left means already who started father started his journey so that it comes under as earlier action so it is written as had plus v3 form now second one finally we reached dirang the bus from tawang had not yet reached dirang this was taken from para number 11 here two actions in the past are clearly separated by time the earlier action is expressed in the past perfect tense finally we reached dirang that is one sentence the bus from tawang had not yet reached now which is earlier which is later the bus must come in time so that comes under as the earlier action finally finally means later they had reached so reached is the simple past tense had not yet reached means had plus negative plus v3 form reached that is the earlier action so this sentence talks about when two actions in the past are clearly separated by time the earlier action is expressed in the past perfect tense third rule i quickly sat down on a rock my father laughed at my plight in this i quickly sat down on a rock my father laughed at my plight these two actions when we observe these are all two are the past actions when do we use both the sentences in the past action that is in the third rule when two actions in the past happen simultaneously simultaneous means without giving a gap if the action completed both of them are expressed in past tense this is very very important till now we have come across the two actions which are earlier action and later action now in the third you are observing when two actions happen simultaneous they are expressed in past tense now fourth one a b c first a sunita never saw a bear before she was transferred to maredmalli this is uh, not from our story this sentence she closed the doors because she heard loud noise from outside third I never met him after I left India. Normally, when the time relation is unambiguous, by the use of before, after, because, etc., the simple past or past perfect is optional. You is used to refer to both past actions. In this, what are the time indicators we have used here? after before because so when you come across the time relation is unambiguous it is optional to you to use either simple past tense or the past perfect to both past actions so the fourth rule is talking about when the time relation is unambiguous these rules are very important for you now comment on the use of the simple past tense past perfect tense as illustrated above in the following sentences, identify the tense and give reasons for the use of the tense used. Now we have to give the clear reason how these sentences were used. Please write them in your notes, not in the textbook. First one, I had come home this time round for a special purpose to get married. My parents had arranged my marriage according to the customs of our tribal society. Up to marry, that is one sentence. My parents had arranged till the tribal society, that is second sentence. Now if you observe these two sentences, in both the sentences, the past perfect tense is used as those two actions had already completed before his narration. So what are the two past perfect tense? Had come. And in second sentence, had arranged. Here in both sentences, past perfect tense is used. Now second sentence, time flew and five months into my marriage, I realized it. In this sentence, both the verbs are in the simple past tense. 
Why? As the time relation is unambiguous and those two occur in the past simultaneously. Third, but after some dilly-dallying, I finally decided against it because marriage had increased my responsibilities and I had got into debt. Marriage had increased my responsibilities and I had got into debt. These two actions occurred before. I finally decided against it. Hence, in the earlier two actions, the past perfect tense is used while the simple past tense is used in the third. On my way home from the bus stop, my trunk had been carried by a porter. The above action occurred before his narrating the story. Hence, the past perfect tense had been carried is used. Fifth, a large crowd gathered at our place the day I was to leave. People had come to wish me luck. Gathered is the tense used in the past. Was I was to leave, was is also used. In this sentence, the simple past tense is used as it occurred later. People had come to wish me luck. Had come. The past perfect tense is used as it occurred earlier. People had come and then the large crowd gathered. Hence, the two sentences are used. So, people had come to wish me luck. This is given in the past perfect tense as it occurred earlier. Father was quiet for some time. He thoughtfully looked at the son for a moment and then his eyes fell on the can of homemade wine that I was carrying. The actions in the above sentences occurred in the past simultaneously. Hence, the simple past tense is used in all the actions except the last part of the second sentence that I was carrying here. The past continuous tense is used as it was going on at the time of narrating. So, when you observe the sentences, you should be very careful about the tenses. Now, 7. I gave him the can of wine. He poured himself a mug and handed me the can. He drank all of it at one go. He then arranged the belt that I was attached to the trunk carefully on his forehead. When you look at all these sentences, the actions are in the simple past tense. As they all occurred in the past simultaneously and also one more reason here, the time relation is unambiguous. Eighth one, I had never got used to physical labor having stayed in hostel right from my childhood. I had never got used to. Here the past perfect tense is used as the author while narrating went into the past and told. So, the past perfect tense is used here. His feet had developed cracks and somehow resembled those of an elephant. When two actions in the past are clearly separated by time, the earlier action is expressed in the past perfect tense. His feet had developed cracks. This action took place before his feet resembled those of an elephant. Hence, the earlier action is expressed in the past perfect tense. And the latter is expressed in the simple past. Had developed, resembled. Tenth one, I noticed this for the first time. I hadn't noticed that the road was uneven. I noticed this for the first time. Here, the simple past tense is used as it is the author's narration. I hadn't noticed that. This action might have occurred if the author did it, but this action did not take place. Hence, the past perfect tense not is used. The road was uneven. The condition of the road was mentioned here. It was the condition of the road when he narrated. Hence, the simple past tense is used. Now, please try to write your answers from 11 to 15. How we have completed up to 10. Now start writing 11 to 15 answers. The next grammar topic to you. Adverbial clauses. Here is a picture given to you. Observe this picture. 
there are several types of adverbial clauses first let us know about the adverbial clauses now first adverbial clause of time adverbial clauses of time are introduced by the subordinating conjunctions what are they whenever since after before while as etc so when we are using these subordinating conjunctions it comes across the adverbial clauses of time you can also go with as soon as example as soon as the bell rang the children came out crying while sachin was batting there was a heavy noise all over the stadium next adverb of place where wherever he went to the place where he spent his childhood nani takes his laptop wherever he goes adverb of cause or reason you know for reason we say because as since as you can use or since it was foggy yesterday the flights were cancelled he walks slowly because he is lame adverb of purpose so that in order to narayana learned some tamil words so that he can manage himself adverb of result so that such that Dilip is so short that he cannot reach the switchboard. Krishna is such a talkative boy that nobody can bear his murmuring. Adverb of condition if conditional clause unless on condition that provided that unless you walk fast you cannot catch the bus. I lend you money provided that you repay it next week. adverb of concession although though even though although he is poor he is honest she is sincere in her duty even though there is a political views so these are the examples for the adverbs now coming to our textbook study the following examples from the story as i had to do a bit of catching up i walked fast now subordinating conjunction added is as i had to do a bit of catching up as i was going to take my first sip i heard father's voice he decided to go to his workplace because he got into debts so here you will be observing about adverb of reason adverb of cause you can also state now exercise is given to us look at these sentences and he given in the brackets which adverb has to be added you should complete this exercise in the textbook itself there was nobody in the village to carry the others luggage everybody was engaged in some important work in the, bra- the bracket word given to you is because how do we write this sentence there was nobody in the village to carry the others luggage because everybody was engaged in some important work second the roads were not good he preferred less luggage bracket word as how do we start as the roads were not good he preferred less luggage he wanted to stay at home for some more days he wanted to apply for leave since since he wanted to stay at home for some more days he wanted to apply for leave you may not attend the class you don't want to come again condition if if you want to come again you have to attend the class next the boy was about to come down the stairs then it crumbled down when when the boy was about to come down the stairs it crumbled down next writing skills in the story the journey the author says my education had made me shun physical labor this is an adverse effect of education now write an essay on the adverse effect of education here are some points see 
the points were given to you effect on doing some work that involves physical labor dress fashion family relationship giving respect to elders the treatment of illiterate people now you observe this points and write an essay the adverse effect of education in your notes itself start writing this essay next going with the summarizing a few guidelines and tips to summarize the text are given below read them carefully then read the essay on umbrella morals and summarize it guidelines and tips to summarize the text to summarize is to condense a text into main points and to do so in your own words to include every detail in neither necessary nor desirable in order to write a good summary you may have to gather minor points or components of an argument from different places in the text in order to summarize the text in an organized way a point made in the beginning of an essay and then one made towards the end may need to be grouped together in your summary to concisely convey the argument that the author is making so the main important summary how to make a summary he given you here few points read the article carefully as many times as you require until you understand the article you should read it begin your summary by mentioning the author and title so first we should give preference for mentioning the author and the title the publication and date may also be mentioned if you want you can mention the publication and date summarizing in your own words in third person using simple present tense see this is very vital third person using simple present tense you should start in your own words the summary use transition words however moreover then also etc avoid unnecessary details and direct quotes do not give your own opinion keep it within the word limit given or one third of the original text prepare short and simple sentences be consistent with the tense check for grammar and punctuation errors now here is the essay given to you on umbrella morals written by alfred george gardner so this is the essay given to you now your task after reading the entire essay is here is a summary written by a student read it carefully and edit it in terms of the key points principles of summarizing the absence of linkers tense prepositions articles and punctuations so this summary was written by one student so in his own words now he is asking you to edit carefully okay you go through it and try to edit now i am showing you after edition this is what my idea about this summary next study skills use the following graphic organizers to represent your understanding of the story the journey modify the layout to suit your needs so here is a picture look at it how beautiful it is first one inner feelings story the journey character the author what did he do he given answer what did he do he did not carry his luggage what reason did he give write it what are the reasons what would you do your comment on the action others comment so i have written the answers once you observe this now listening listening to the story and answer the questions that follow read the statements given below and mark true or false against each of them so this is your part to do it because the students listening listening is very important in this the listening skills is given at the end of our all units observe the listening skills see here is the listening skills of unit 3 which is on page number 210 this is the story which is given after reading this entire story try to answer them whether it is true or false just mark it t or f which of the following is the most appropriate title for the story you have just listened now after reading give the perfect title for this so today this is our end of our class now the homework task which is given to you is the first task is write the reasons from 11 to 
about the simple past past perfect uses the sentences which are given to you next write an essay the adverse effect of education after completing practice about the reduplicative words compound words also thank you have a wonderful day